Imagine it's the end of the month and you're left wondering where all your money went. You've been working hard earning those dollars but it seems like an uphill battle when it comes to managing your finances. Maybe you're struggling to pay bills or perhaps that dream vacation seems like a distant mirage. You might even be wrestling with the monster called debt. If this sounds all too familiar don't worry, you're not alone. And there's a solution. The 50-30-20 rule. So, what is this 50-30-20 rule we're talking about? Well, picture your monthly after-tax income as a delicious, freshly baked pie. Now imagine slicing this pie into three unequal but carefully measured pieces. The 50-30-20 rule, in essence, is a simple yet effective budgeting guideline that helps you divide your income into these three categories. First, we have the largest slice, which is 50%. This portion is dedicated to your needs. We're talking about the basics here. Rent or mortgage, utilities, groceries and other essentials. Yes, that includes your internet bill, but no, not your Netflix subscription. That's a want, but we'll get there in a bit. Next up we have the 30% slice which is allocated for your wants. These are not your bare necessities but those little extras that make life enjoyable. Think dining out, streaming services and that pair of shoes you've been eyeing. Lastly, we have the smallest but arguably the most important piece, the 20%. This slice is for your savings and debt repayments. It's your safety net for the future, your retirement fund, your rainy day stash, your uh-oh the car broke down fund. The beauty of this rule lies in its simplicity. It's like a financial GPS, guiding you to manage your money efficiently, gain control over your finances and plan for the future. It's not a one-size-fits-all, but a flexible approach that can be tweaked to suit your individual circumstances and priorities. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? But let's break it down further. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more financial tips and tricks. Your support means the world to us, and it enables us to continue providing content like this. Remember. Mastering your money starts with simple steps, so start today. First up, let's discuss the needs, which take up 50% of your income. Now don't confuse needs with wants. Needs are those bare necessities that keep your world spinning. We're talking about rent or mortgage, utilities, groceries, transportation, and healthcare. In other words, the expenses that you just can't dodge. You might be wondering, why 50%? Isn't that a lot? Well, when you start adding up all these expenses, you'll realize it's not as much as you thought. Remember, we're playing by the 50-30-20 rule, so it's all about balance. Now let's talk about budgeting within this category. First things first, you need to identify your needs. This might require a bit of self-reflection. Do you really need that daily latte, or is it more of a want? Once you've got a clear idea of your needs, it's time to make a budget. Start by listing all your needs and their costs. Then, calculate 50% of your after-tax income. This is your budget for your needs. If your needs exceed this budget, you may need to make some adjustments. This could mean moving to a cheaper apartment, using public transportation, or cooking at home more often. But wait, what if your needs cost less than 50% of your income? Well, that's a win. You now have extra money you can allocate towards your wants or savings, but don't get carried away and splurge it all. Remember budgeting is all about making smart decisions and that's the 50% of your income dedicated to needs. It might seem daunting at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's a breeze. Plus, it gives you a sense of control over your finances and who doesn't want that? Remember, needs are necessities, not luxuries. Now onto the fun part, the wants, which make up 30% of your income. You see, wants are those non-essential items that we all desire to have. They're the little luxuries that add a sprinkle of joy to our lives. They could be anything from that fancy dinner at your favorite restaurant, the latest smartphone, a weekend getaway, or even that pair of designer shoes you've been eyeing. But here's the catch, enticing as they may be, wants should ideally not exceed 30% of your after-tax income. Why, you may ask? Well, that's because the danger of overspending on wants is that it could dip into your savings or worse, lead you into debt. And trust me, that's a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. Now how do you prioritize your wants without blowing your budget? It's simple really. Start by making a list of all the things you want. Then, rank them in order of importance to you. This way, you can allocate your 30% wisely, ensuring you get to enjoy your hard-earned money while still staying within your budget. And remember, it's not about depriving yourself, it's about making smart choices. So, if you're eyeing that new gadget, maybe hold off on eating out for a while or if you're planning a vacation, save up for it gradually rather than spending all at once. 
So, there you have it. Wants are an integral part of the 50-30-20 rule. They add a bit of spice to life, making the hard work worth it. But, like with everything else, balance is key. So go ahead, indulge, but do so wisely. Yes, you can have your cake and eat it too, but moderation is key. Finally, let's talk about the savings, which should be 20% of your income. This slice of your budget is your safety net, your future, your peace of mind. It's not just about stashing cash under your mattress, it's about planning for the unexpected, investing in your retirement, and chipping away at any debt. Savings are meant to cater to future demands. These can come in the form of a sudden car breakdown, an unexpected medical bill, or a leaky roof. It's also for the planned future like a down payment on a home, your child's education, or that dream vacation. And let's not forget about retirement because who wants to work forever? Now you might be thinking 20%, that's a lot. But remember, this isn't just about saving for a rainy day. This 20% should also go towards eliminating any debt you may have. Credit card bills, student loans, mortgages. These are all things that can keep you up at night. By allocating a portion of your income towards these debts, you're not just paying off what you owe, you're buying peace of mind. How do you prioritize? Start with high interest debts, these are the ones costing you the most. Then, build an emergency fund. Aim for enough to cover three to six months of living expenses. Anything after that, consider investing for your future. Remember, a penny saved is a penny earned. So start saving those pennies and watch them grow. Your future self will thank you. Now that we've broken down the 50-30-20 rule, how can you make it work for you? Imagine you've just landed a new job with a monthly take-home pay of $2,000. Using the rule, you'd allocate $1,000 for needs, $600 for wants, and $400 for savings. Sounds easy, right? But let's not forget, life isn't always that straightforward. There might be months where your car breaks down, or you have an unexpected medical bill. During these times, your needs might take up more than 50% of your budget. Don't panic! Adjustments can be made in the wants or savings categories to accommodate these unforeseen expenses. Further, if you have student loans or credit card debt, your savings category might look more like a debt repayment category. That's okay. Remember the rule is flexible and can be adjusted based on your individual circumstances and priorities. When it comes to managing wants, it can be tempting to splurge on that new designer bag or the latest smartphone. Here's a tip. Try to prioritize your wants. Ask yourself, do I really need this or can this wait? This can help you stay within your 30% allocation. Now let's talk about the big one, savings. It might seem difficult to put away 20% of your income, especially when you're just starting out, but trust us, it's worth it. Start small if you need to and gradually increase your savings over time. And remember, there are plenty of resources out there to help you manage your finances. From budgeting apps and online calculators to personal finance blogs and books, you're not alone on this journey. With the 50-30-20 rule, you're not just budgeting, you're building a future. So, are you ready to take control of your finances? If you found this explanation helpful and want to learn more about managing your finances, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'll be bringing you more life-changing financial tips so, don't miss out.